but there's a chip in here. You know me in technology. Wah, wah. I'm not a technology. Like I could care less about technology in a running shoe with respect to an actual chip. Let's go into the studio. There it is, the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind, a long name for a running shoe, but that's okay. In the studio, shoe, shoe, original studio. All right, we are in transition mode right now from the old studio to the studio 1.5. So, more updates on that very, very soon. This is a neutral road running shoe. And I've been, I mean, I probably received this from Under Armour. Thank you for your patience, Under Armour. March? I think it was March. It might have even been February. And it just, you know, I mean, come on. It's just Nova Blast. Uh, Rincon, well, not Rincon 3. That's about to be tested. Anyway, lots of shoes. So I, I appreciate the patience, Under Armour. But we did. Bizarre. Bizarre situation, everybody. I'll just say, not an incredible score. But not only did I take it to 50 miles, I took it to 60 miles. I'll explain more about that here in a minute. Here we go, though. Whoa, loosey goosey, get the flock out. Here we go. Come on now, it's twisting like no tomorrow. The Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind. Here we go. Uh, 26 in the heel, 18 in the forefoot for an 8 millimeter drop. Okay, definitely in that medium to even lowish stack height through that midsole. Women's size 8, men's size 9 on your screen. Let's just confirm 7.3, 7.4 in my size. That's actually pretty good for a training shoe on the roads. All right, I'm just looking at the outsole as I glance down here. Very fascinating. We'll get to that outsole here in a minute. Okay, 8 out of 10 for the weight score on the upper. We're looking at this warp upper, which is zonally structured. Um, it's a vertical and horizontal, uh, I guess I'll just call it, uh, it's, a, it's almost like a knit, okay? It's not an engine, it's definitely not an engineered mesh. It's it's, throw, it's almost a throwback to like the Torin 4 or the Torin 3.5. It's just got this really, I'll just say kind of thick, thick uh, upper, which is definitely driving the breathability score down. I did not feel any breeze on my toes out there. So in the summer months, I think Under Armour, we could work on this breathability 100%. Okay, ooh. Nice, nice collar. Nice, nice heel counter. Great job there, Under Armour. Feels amazing. And okay, for the lockdown standard score, overall score is being driven down mostly because I think they can, it, Under Armour, let's innovate big, big time with the material being used in the flow velocity win. But I do love this collar and heel. I'm going to say plush, especially the heel counter. Very, very comfortable. Moving on to that midsole. Okay. This is a Dow Olefin based compound with a low compression, uh, which helps with durability. And I'm going to say a decent durability thus far through the midsole. But what's crazy is the ride and energy is not there. Like it's actually coming across stiff. It's, you know what? Hoka Mach 3. Hoka, it, that shoe was not good for me. The Hoka Mach 3 was even more firm and stiff through the foot strike. This is reminding me of that shoe. Uh, but what's interesting, and I'll get to how I will use this shoe here in a second. Anyway, ride an energy return. I'm not feeling a ton back through the foot strike. I hate to put it, but I took the shoe to 60 miles. Again, I'll explain why here in a minute. And yes, it did fall. Running shoe matrix, upper right hand corner. Road running shoe matrix, I should say. Uh, it did fall into the firm column, I guess it would be, in the running shoe 
Matrix. Overall score, though, 7.75 out of 10. Uh, again, getting back to the durability combined with the ride and energy return. Okay, moving on to the outsole. You know me, I don't love a ton of rubber on the outsole. All right, you see it there? There's nothing. Totally exposed. I love that. Now, I am starting to see after 60 miles a little bit of wear and tear through the forefoot. And it's actually exciting for me to see that because it means I'm, I think, using the shoe correctly. But I, am, I have truly transitioned kind of to that forefoot striking from more midfoot to heel, let's say three, four, five years ago. I mean, there's no wear and tear on the heel. So outsole score is actually pretty solid, mostly because I get excited when the weight of the shoe is down and they're not putting a ton of rubber onto that outsole fit true to size and frankly may have been able to go a half size up a little snug through the toe box i'm gonna say the whole shoe felt snug true to size okay so i you know have a good return policy i wouldn't be hesitant to go a half size up i don't know i haven't tested enough under armor shoes to know if that's consistent across more of their lineup so six and a half out of ten here we go comfort score remember comfort score is the entire shoe the midsole ride the upper the whole kit and caboodle all right so here we go 6.75 out of 10 mostly because of the midsole ride positives and drawbacks positive smooth through the foot strike okay drawback is that lack of energy return through the midsole durability prediction i'm gonna go 350 maybe 400 okay we'll stick with 350 not an incredible durability prediction especially you know that outsole it's holding up okay but um yeah it's not going to go forever and ever we're sticking with 350 there we go now how will i use the shoe who is it be best for this is the bizarre what i was mentioning earlier when i put the shoe on i was not excited when i started running in the shoe i got a little excited and then i ran more and then i ran more and you're going to see the full review score here in a second and you're going to be very perplexed why was this shoe not relegated and here it is foot strike and being in control of the shoe for me as i've aged as i've gained more what i'd like to think is more experience in the running world and the running shoe testing world i am very excited for being in control of how my ankle especially the ankle flexion is reacting to the all the different running shoes that i've tested in the last two years therefore for this shoe, it's a, it's a daily trainer, could be a tempo day, but at the end of the day, it allows me to be in control of my biomechanics, specifically below the knee. And it gets me bit. So that's why I took it to say, even though it's not very comfortable, it's not a ton of energy return. It just allows me to be in control. There you go. All right, that's how I'm going to use this shoe moving forward. And that's who it is best for as well. Now, price point, wah, wah, wah. I don't know what, oh, my, 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 my. There's a, two, there's a chip in here. You know me in technology. Wah, wah. I'm not a technology. Like I could care less about technology in a running shoe with respect to an actual chip is inside this midsole, which supposedly you can connect to the Under Armour app, and then it can give you a bunch of data, and I go by feel. You know, that's how I train. I like to, tr I like to listen to, my, to the body. I like to listen and to be in tune with what I don't want to look at an app when I'm running. I don't want to analyze computer data at the end of my run. I want to enjoy the process a little bit more. So I don't know why, if that's why this price point is $160, but there is Bluetooth technology built into the shoe just in case you like running um, data. All right, I'll leave it there. There's my score for the price point. Not good for a daily trainer. Other shoes to buy, Hoka Mach 4, Asics Magic Speed, Reebok Float Ride Run Fast 3.0, and I'm even going to say the Saucony Kinvara 12. It's got that same lightheartedness feel to it, all right? Just kind of, you got to be ready to, you know, and probably out of all those, the most it's reminding me of are the last two, the Kinvara 12 and the Float Ride Run Fast 3.0 Under Armour Flow Velocity Wing Quick Specs on your screen. One more time, 8 millimeters, 7.3 in my size. All right, Warp Upper uh, Flow Midsole, $160. Oh, my, my. Full review score after 60 miles, 6.52 out of 10. Whoa, horrible score. Not even close to the sevens, but yet I still enjoyed it. It's really perplexing. 
So I'm just telling to you how it is out here in the studio. All right, comment of the day, question of the day. Here we go. Shout out to Albert Catala. Thank you, Albert. This is from the blog, or I think it might have been from the Matrix vlog, actually. Thank you, Albert, for taking the time to comment. Here we go. He says, I have to admit, I was expecting the Hokamak 4 to be the absolute winner of this year's Matrix, and it turned out to be more even with the other great shoes. Plot twist. Ja, ja, ja. Great job, Seth. Thank you, Albert. Again, upper right hand corner, also uh, right here, link to it down below. Let's hope I uh, can remember that. All right, question of the day. Um, this is interesting. What running website do you visit most often? There's so many, there's actually a lot. There's a lot. You know, whether it's news, whether it's gear, whether it's blogs, whether it, whatever the case may you can go any direction you want. What running website, ooh, I cannot wait to read your answers to this one, do you visit most often, okay? It's just like a go-to running website. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching. We'll toss it to, I don't even think we have an Under Armour playlist because I just haven't tested that many shoes. Therefore, of course, the road running shoe matrix. Onward and upward, keep turning in that doorknob. All right, everyone, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.